Hey folks, E.T. here, and one of the biggest questions that I always get, that we always see, is how do I, how do I start to find these swing plays? And I've kind of piecemealed those out in some tweets as we've gone throughout the past few weeks, but decided I'd maybe just go through a video of the process that I use and kind of what I look for as I'm going along. So the first thing that you really want to do is that I do is I go to Scanny here. Scanny is sort of where is my starting point for all things. A, a good note on Scanny is I don't check it until after AH trading, after hours fit trading has finished. Okay, so um, I do check it every day to see if there's anything new that looks that, that gives some potential, but I wait till that 7 p.m. Central or 8 Eastern for AH trading to finish before it to really process a lot. You'll get a lot more pings, a lot more data if you wait that long. So use that hint. Uh, and wait until a little bit after. So what I simply do is I go to option filters, I click optionable, and then I just go through things that are at support and at resistance. We'll start with some supports, okay? So we're gonna take a look here and we'll just go through these plays like I actually go through them. So one of the ones that we talked about a little bit in the trading discord was JetBlue. So let's go ahead and just pull it up a little bit and this charts page is going to be your real, your real winner here and be real helpful. So as we can see, let's just start off with customer positioning is a little bit bullish going into this week. That's pretty good. Gamma is secondary pretty much to support historical support resistances when it comes to non-indices plays. Now remember that. Uh, non-indices plays, gamma is important, but it's less important than the customer positioning and its historical support and resistance. So let's just go ahead and draw our levels and take a look and see. So we are actually below a support right here, which could mean more downside. And I do believe I do have customer calls painted on. So we'll go ahead and make sure that we have that. So customer calls are rising a bit. We'll grab our support and resistance again, and we can see that it's a little bit bullish uh, customer positioning wise going in. And it does have some strong gamma sitting here at 7.5 and 7.0 as a, as, a, as a repel, but it does have a nice draw at 7.5. So let's just take a look at that real quick. When we see this chart here, I see something that, uh, that historically has held pretty well at this area as we go along, right? It, it seems to be pretty strong. We have gotten a little bit further below. So we're at 676 right now. We've had some dips below that that have, that have kind of pulled back up. Sorry, 650. I was scrolled over a little bit there. So now that I'm looking at this, this is one of those things that I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at for a long for now. And obviously market sentiment is going to have a lot to do with it. We'll go ahead and check to see if it has anything. It's not that great in August, right? It's pretty poor, but there is a chance for a relief bounce and a little bit of pull up towards some of these levels. Not saying it goes all the way to 837, obviously, and we can drill down a little bit, which is something I do under the five minute chart to see what, see what the levels look like there as well. So we do have a potential 638. So that's pretty interesting to see, right? We do have a 638 spot that is, that, that is a support resistance. And we have some 655 here and some 663, a little bit higher up. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna keep it just real simple here. I'm gonna bring up JetBlue. All right, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say, I would like to set a price alert at let's say close to that at 643. So what this is going to do is this is going to warn me, and actually we don't like that price alert because we can see we had some wicks down. So we'll bring it down here, let's say just 642 where we see those wicks. So I've now set a price alert and my phone is going to alert me if JetBlue gets a little bit of a flush and that is the spot where I will entertain some longs. So taking a look at that, um, it's not a ticker I would usually play. I don't like things in this price range. I really don't. I like I like the, the larger cap uh, options. They're a little bit more liquid. They're a little bit easier to get rid of if you buy a lot of them, things like that. So uh, I'm going to just say I'll buy you know some of these and I'll take 10, 20% if it goes my direction with my 20% stop. That is my process where I would look at JetBlue. Now, now let's take a look at some other things. LMT is interesting. Just looking at its chart here, let's go ahead and bring it up. It's also on a support and it's been consolidating for quite a while. It's had some pretty good dips down here, but it's been kind of hanging in this range as we go. Let's drill down to a little bit shorter time frame. Let's see here. All right, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and grab its support resistance. It is up against 
a resistance right here so that may actually be something that we're that we're not necessarily looking at or it's near support at this 453.02 sorry so really ideal entry for me would be another dip as you can see let's just take a look here it really liked that 449.02 okay so a, so a bad day for it at 449.02 but you can see it's long period of consolidation between 449 and 453 that's a pretty tight range so anywhere around 451.63 449, 449.02, which is, is where I would set my price alert for because I want a long on dips, okay, and it, it is near support, and let's just go ahead and check its other information. It has, it generally has a pretty good win percentage in August. That's good to see, okay. It is a little bearish going into these, these two weeks right here, right, our 880, 818 and our 825, so that, that is one strike against it, so maybe there is some more consolidation. And I will say LMT is very spready. It's not something that you want to play that I, that I would play if I had a smaller account. Its contracts are a bit more expensive, uh, and they're a little harder to offload because of those spreads sometimes. And we can see here its gamma, its largest gamma pull is still right around that area that it's been, that it's been going. So 450, that's that 449.02, pretty simple one. Might put a scratch, a big X on this but it's long period of consolidation should let it move sooner or later. So if you have uh, if you have the buying power, it might be okay to take this a couple weeks out on a dip and get a nice run up of it. So let's just check, let's just take another one. Let's just see where we're at. Target it has earnings this week. We've been talking a lot about Target in our in our free in our free swing trade ideas that you can sign up through from the Trading Discord. Uh, I don't play earnings, but I, because it's been, and I just want to take a look at it and show you all, because it's been kind of just hanging out in this area for so long, just a long, long, long period of consolidation, I might take a lotto into next week for maybe this 134. They're pretty expensive, but it does have some bullish leaning right here. It doesn't do, <coughs> excuse me, that well in August, but that doesn't mean that it can't go ahead and run up a little bit. We're not, we're not taking it for the whole month. And as you can see, it does have some pretty nice gamma above where it's at with a rejection around that 134, 135, a repel if it, were, if, if, if it happens to go up. But it does have earnings, so this is a bit of a misnomer. Maybe don't hit it too hard uh, on my end, at least. That's just something that I'm going to keep an eye on as I go. All right, so now let's flip this out. Let's get rid of our whole horizontal support. And let's look at things at horizontal resistance. Brings up a pretty good size list here. FedEx is one that we've been shorting for a while, since 270, uh, finally completely out of that. Banks have been really interesting. We see JPM and, and K, and, well, JPM there, and we see KR, which is our consumer discretionary. So I think I saw some pretty heavy calls going into that one, so maybe not. MasterCard is also is also in the banking sector, right? XLV as well. So there, the, we, have, we have a few things in the banking sector that are going. So let's just take a look at JPM really quick and see what the chart looks like, see where we're at. It's had a bit of a dip, obviously. Uh, I usually have price alerts for 156 just auto set on this for what for a short and I completely I completely just deleted them and missed it. Would have been a nice rundown last week. Let's go ahead and take a look at its levels, take a look at its data. Real simple. So it's near a resistance up here at 155. Okay, so that's interesting to see. 155 would be a good spot, as you can see here. You just look at these historical levels, how well they play out over time. So if I'm looking to short JPM, I'm going to go ahead and set my alert. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say I want JPM. And I'm going to set an alert about, we'll just say a crossover of 155, somewhere near there, just to get an alert. All right, so now I've, whoops, drew a line instead of setting an alert. There we go. We'll delete that line. We don't need that. So this is how I kind of start to play these swing trades. Uh, trading view will alert you when something crisis, when something crosses over your spot, okay? And then you can revisit the data. If we're looking here, right, it's pretty bearish going into this week. So let's just we'll just check Mastercard here in a second to see if it has, if it also has the same information as we go. JPM does not do well in August, so that's so that's interesting to see. Dark pulls look like they're thinning out a little bit. Another thing that you can always check is you can kind of come through and you can just check. It's it's just quick dark pull we want to look right here. 156.84 is a spot that is a real heavy dark pull, so price could gravitate towards where the money is. But interesting to see that's around 
not too far away from where we want to play a short side if we're looking at JPM. So maybe I, maybe I come back over here and I say, mm, my price alert's not, it's a little low. I'm going to move it up to a crossover 156 just to see how it happens. And if it gets a nice run up in the morning, then I have a good idea. Obviously, uh, it, likes to, it likes to hang out in this area a little bit as well. So I don't want to take too far out of the money contracts. And JPMs are actually pretty cheap and not that hard to not that hard to offload if you're doing well and the spreads aren't bad. So this is, this is my process. This is how I start to go. I just start to go through and pick things. Let's check MA real quick and see what it looks like. Support resistance. So it's nearing another. It's nearing another resistance coming up at 397. Not too far off 398. We can see these little candles here. We got over a little bit, but it just could not hang that long and it dropped below. Also, it has pretty poor performance. Uh, well, not that bad, 61, 61, but not as good as we see in April, right? So the April, make, make a mental note, April is a good time to maybe long MA. Let's take, go ahead and take a look at its options really quick. It's showing a little bit bullish on customer positioning, so maybe this is not one that we look to short. And it's got some gamma exposure uh, that's actually pulling a little bit lower down, which is interesting to see. Its largest bar is 380, so it could see a nice dip there. Let's go ahead and look and see what its customer calls look like. Oops, wrong button. There we go. Let's look at its customer calls. So they are picking up a little bit. Now let's check customer puts to see, and they are dropping. So this is maybe one, right? Just we go through these buttons. We go through. We just check each little thing to start to form a thesis. So I'm going to put a scratch on MA as it's got, it for a short at least, because it does have some data that shows that it could go up a little bit after this nice long period here of consolidation as it's gone through. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have here? FedEx, we've already played that a bunch. KR, I don't know if I want to mess with consumer discretionary. It's had kind of a weird week as we've been going. ZS, let's see what that is. Just check it out. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's, it's sitting there at pretty close to a resistance above. Whoa, we're far away from a resistance above, actually. So that one's maybe, maybe we need to lower our time frame a little bit to check to see where we're at there. Sometimes, sometimes you need to do that there. That makes more sense. 143.11 is a resistance. As you can see, look how well these levels have really worked. We didn't quite get to that 147, but we did come down off of it. We've bounced off of here. And if we get a little bit of a candle close below here, then there is some downside going in, right? It does have its largest gamma pull at 142, which is about where it's at. And it's show, but it is showing bearish going into this week in the customer positioning. So let's go ahead and check our, let's go ahead and check our customer calls. They are coming up a little bit. Customer puts are going up a little bit as well. So kind of a mixed bag there. Let's just see how it does seasonality wise. August, it actually has a fairly decent, decent win percentage. Not a, not a lucky one with 666 in there, but we'll be okay. So this is just one of those things to kind of take a look at. You can also draw your, draw your GEX levels. And once again, you can come through here and you can check its largest, you can check its largest uh, dark pool level to see where it might get a, re a nice reject. And that's pretty far above actually right around some of these, some of these levels that, that GEX right there, as you can see, lines up with a pretty large gamma pull. So that's interesting to see as well. I hope this is helpful to you all. You do have to do some homework. I will say that. You can't just blindly go through. Sometimes you get smaller lists and you see and you see a little bit less. I know AMAT, I, I, I did see some some above ask sweeps on that maybe, or maybe a trading flow for a short there. So that would be interesting to see to check to see if it's still in. It is pretty far from its last support. So AMAT actually looks good to me. Doesn't that doesn't do that great. In August, my goodness, it does not do great at all. Let's check its customer positioning here. It's actually a little bit bullish, okay, and it does have some gamma that could pull it upwards at other spots, and it's got a pretty good, a pretty good bounce uh, repel away at 140 as well. So that is interesting to see. Uh, I kind of like this. I kind of like AMAT a little bit for a short customer or a puts. Customer put positioning is coming up a little bit. Let's see what calls look like. Calls are going down. So this actually doesn't look too bad to me. Let's drill down to a shorter time frame real quick. You just got to go through these clicks and kind of start finding things. So it's actually below below uh, historicals on the five minutes. So we don't, we don't want to just say it's going to go that far down. 
but interesting to see a little bit on the 15 as well. So maybe our higher time frames are just our best option here to get a good picture of what it looks like. I don't think I would want to short it all the way down to 114, but it, its cons do move pretty well, and it's interesting to see that it does have uh, some some put positioning going up. Its dealer delta is also is also pushing upwards, which we we would have to do a back test on that to check to check to see how that works. And we can always come through here and type in our back test and see what it looks like. And we can check its GEX and VEX profile. I do that as well. Some of these things I just do with bot pings as I go along, as I'm kind of moving along, I just make a mental note. Let's see what its performance looks like. It's actually uh, a bit of an inverse. It's a buy over, but the, but the end profit isn't good. So these aren't numbers that we necessarily want to pay attention to. And the last step of this that I was just talking about is I will check its price distribution just to see if it's kind of correlating with the things I'm seeing. It shows some up days. Uh, and some down days shows shows sort of a mixed a mixed week if you will until until it gets later in the week which it still actually has one solid day there as we go obviously I take a look at its at its gamma exposure as I go and I look to see where its price is most supported which is right around where price is so a run up into 145 would be would be my spot I'll go ahead and set an alert I'll pull it up and I'll just be patient so the thing the thing about swing trading is is you really don't is I really don't want to I really don't want to mess with huh, well it's not letting me do anything here that's nice there we go that'll work uh, the thing that I do is I set these alerts and sometimes they might take a week or two to go through sometimes it just takes a little bit of while on a swing trade for what I'm looking for entry wise to go and then I just go through this chart the charts page makes it so easy it lets me check the data as I go to see if everything still kind of correlates with what I'm looking for with that position. So there, there's how I do this. Let's go ahead and just check KR while we're sitting here, while we're all together, huh? Just to see if there's anything interesting there since it is, is at a resistance. It's got a nice rise here. We can all, you know, without even having to look, we can see if we look left where we've had troubles at that 50.27. So let's draw our level here and just see. So 51.35 is a little bit above it, but it seems to be historically a little bit there. Its dealer deltas are pushing upwards. Let's go ahead and just check its customer calls going way down, customer puts going way up. So this actually doesn't look like too bad of a short. The only problem that I have here uh, is that it, it does get, it, it is a little bit bullish right here for 8.18, but look at these bear moves after that. Kind of crazy to see how bearish, how bearish those get after this week. So this is one of those ones that I just set another alert, right? I want to see it come up to this 5042-ish area. Let's go ahead and just hit it real quick, KR, and we'll just drag up to 50. We'll say this, this is a good spot. Trading view is not being very kind to me today. Well, okay. Well, we're just going to have to let that one go. Maybe I hit a refresh and see if it'll pull it up for me and allow me to actually do it. Oh, that brought up our spy chart, of course. So it's just being a little goofy today. We're going to come up here and we're going to we're going to see if it'll there we go. Right around 50 is where I want to see what happens with KR. So this is simply how I find my different swing plays that you see me posting and see me talking about as I remain patient. I recheck the data on this charts page and then I go into my position. So that is all for now. I hope everybody has a good rest of the weekend. We'll see you in the Discord and on Twitter tomorrow. I hope this is helpful to everybody. If you have any questions, just comment on the post on Twitter when I post this. Everybody have a great Sunday and go get that Oprah money.